Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Innal hamdalillah innal hamdalillah hamdan hamdan wa nashkuru syukran syukran wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alaihi wa natawakkal alayhi wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina may yahdihillahu fala mudilla lahu wa may yudlil fala hadiya wa ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tasliman kathira mazida rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wahlul 'uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli allahumma rabbi zidna ilman wa razuqna fahman subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma 'allamtana innaka antal alimul hakim allahumma waffiqna bi 'ilmi wa 'amalin bima tuhibbu wa tarda allahumma razuqni ikhlasan fi qawli wal 'amal i pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may this session be a means of salvation for the sins we have committed amen i also pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that for every seconds and minutes where we invest in to listen to this clip and this episode may it be amongst a means for us to draw ourselves closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may that means be a means for us to get our admission into his paradise. I also pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he grant me the ability to present and may he grant you the ability to understand. Whatever goodness solely lies in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever evil I would like to ascribe to myself and then shaitan. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, praises and thanks to be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who, who has given us another opportunity to join and tune into this session of nurturing nurturing a vibrant Muslim society. Alhamdulillah, during our last session, I went through with everyone on the importance of seeking knowledge and the importance of continuously seeking knowledge. And I went through with you about a few scholarly saying regarding continuously seeking the knowledge, the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When I concluded my last session, I concluded it with a scholarly saying by Imam Sufyan ibn Uyayna. He gave an excellent answer when he was asked who is most in need of seeking knowledge. And he responded to this question by stating those who have, those who acquire the most knowledge. And then he was questioned why. The questioner then asked why. He responded because if they make mistakes, it will be worse. So as such, to be continuously in the environment of seeking knowledge, particularly those who are students of knowledge and those who are scholars. And amongst the other saying of the Imams, uh, Imam Al-Fakhruddin Al-Razi, the great Mufassir, Quranic in interpretator, and the prominent scholar in philosophy, Ilmul Kalam, and other disciplines who authored many works. Allah gave him such fame in knowledge that people would come from all over the world just to come and visit him. When he came to the city of Merv in Turkmenistan, flocks of scholars and students came to came to visit him and they had the privilege of listening to and learning from him. Amongst the seekers of knowledge who attended his circle was a young man less than 20 years old. He was very well versed in the literature and genealogy. When Imam Fakhruddin realized that this particular student was an expert in genealogy, a field in which he knew very little, he asked his student to teach him he did not find an unacceptable to become the student of his student. And he even made him sit in the teacher's place while he himself sat at his feet. Such, such, an, act was, such an act was characteristic of Imam Fakhruddin and did not detract from his high status as he was the Imam of his age. Look at the qualities of a true, a truly 
a true scholar. A true scholar would not undermine anything. They would not think, oh, I've become old, you know, I have sufficient knowledge. No, the amongst amongst the characteristic, amongst the characteristic of a true scholar is when they come across. It's a reminder for myself. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and bless me to continuously acquire knowledge even when we grow old. And when we grow old, naturally, you and I are going to come across people younger than us. And when we come across people younger than us, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them certain ability, certain understanding, on a particular topic, what must we do? What must we do? We as Muslims, we as a student of knowledge, student of knowledge, what more about Fakhruddin al Razi, who's a scholar, where he did not hesitate to sit with his student, and not only to sit with his student, place his student on his chair. And he sat beneath his student to acquire the blessing of knowledge given to his student, which he had very little understanding on. He had very little understanding on the topic of genealogy. So he doesn't mind learning from his student who had better understanding than him. How remarkable this story is. It's, it's just not a story. This is reality. And this is why we are able to hear such profound scholars who came up with profound works and their profound work is not only profound during their lifetime, but it has reached up till today and it is the it is amongst many resources where we look up a point. And these are the means for us to un better understand about our religion. This remarkable story was told by the literary historian Yaqut al-Hamawi in his book Al-Mu'ajam al-Udab, <coughs> the Dictionary of Literary Authors, where he gives a biography of Aziz al-Din Ismail ibn al-Hassan al-Marwazi and al-Nasabba al-Husayni, whom Yaqut met and spent much time with so was able to write a comprehensive biography about him. And just to give you a snippet of his biography, he says, Aziz al-Din told me, Imam Fakhruddin al-Razi went to Murph. He had such a great reputation and was held in such awe that nobody dared to argue with him. They would barely breath in his presence I went to meet him and I often went to study with him. One day he said to me, I would like you to write me a book giving the genealogy of Atabi'in, the descendants of uh, Al-Talibin, Al the descendants of Abu Talib, so that I may study it. For I do not want to remain ignorant of it. I asked him, do you want it presented as a family tree or written down as narrative? He said, a family tree cannot be learned by heart. I want something that I can memorize. So I want, I went away and wrote the book, which I call Al-Fakhri. When I brought it to him, he took it, then got up from his mattress, sat on the mat and told me to sit in the place he had just vacated. I thought this was too much and told him, I'm your servant. I, repre I reprimanded me severely saying, sit where I tell you. He reprehended me severely, sorry. He reprimanded me severely saying, sit where I tell you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows I felt that I had no choice but to sit where he told me. Then he began to read the book to me while he was sitting at my feet, asking me about anything he did not understand until he finished the book when he had completed. Say, now sit wherever you wish, for in this field of knowledge you are my teacher and I am your student. And it is not right for the student to sit anywhere but at the feet of his teacher. 
So I got up and he sat in his right and he sat in his rightful place and I began to read to him sitting where he had sat previously. After quoting this incident, Yakut said, indeed, this is good manner, especially for a man who enjoys such a high status. It's when a person realizes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed knowledge to people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will choose and bestow his knowledge to whomever he will. Yakhtasu bi rahmatihi man yasha. Allah chooses for himself whom he wills. He chooses and when he chooses a servant with an understanding of a knowledge, then it is only right to give the due rights to the individual. And bear in mind, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala profoundly reveals in Surah Yusuf, وَفَوْقَ كُلِّ ذِي عِلْمٍ عَلِيمٍ وَفَوْقَ كُلِّ ذِي عِلْمٍ عَلِيمٍ There is someone above us. There is someone who always have more knowledge than us. And the one who has the ultimate knowledge is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For every time you seek knowledge, know that there's someone who's above you. And the one who has the absolute complete knowledge is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu alim. Allah is, Allah is full of knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who possesses the knowledge. He is the possessor of all knowledges. So amongst the test where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put us with is when this person has knowledge and when you doesn't have this knowledge. You and I need to embrace the fact that Allah has not given you the understanding of the topic only because he wants to test you from that area. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests you from that, that, that particular topic, that is for you to see how much sincere you are in continuously seeking the knowledge in his course. Or have you seek the knowledge only to acquire materialistic gain and only to only to achieve and attain materialistic gain and neglecting and omitting the purpose of seeking knowledge which is to earn the maruladillah, to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what Muslim need to know, number one that Muslim need to know is how to read the Quran properly with tajweed. So as a as an average Muslim or average Muslim and below or person who is not exposed to the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or who is getting to expose to the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the first criteria is Quran the first criteria is how do you how does one need to pronounce or number, not even pronounce to familiarize yourself with the alphabet of Arabic and then the conjunction of the word, the joining of the word, and then how do you need to pronounce the word, and then what are the proper way, the method to articulate those words, and then walk into to understand its meaning. So it is a process familiarizing, pronouncing, enhancing the pronouncement, reciting it in the way it should be recited, and then coming to the tier of understanding its meaning. <clears throat> Many would say that I want to understand the meaning. No doubt that everyone wants to understand the meaning. But there is a way to acquire, there's a structure to acquire knowledge. And this is how it has been. No doubt you're able to jump immediately to understanding the meaning, but know that this is a successful model which has been applied time and again over the different centuries. And this is a successful model which will be which can be used by anyone and it is highly encouraged to be used by everyone. Even though your mind would be 
thinking what is this meaning why am i reciting this thing but the thing is you need to go through the procedure any in any subject you know sometimes when you sit for a new lesson be thinking how oh, to know this thing but the, the lecturer or the trainer will say oh this is the way it is being structured this is the way it should be uh, presented and then we will be all okay why because it, it is coming from a trained trainer and same thing should be done for the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he should learn something of the sciences of hadith, right? Like Mustafa al some hadith first, you know, some small uh, hadith like Man Salaka Tariqan Yal Tami so fihi ilma sahad Allah Tariqan Al Jannah or La Yashra Wahda Kumka Iman or the hadith, short, short hadith, and then move up to. What is the technicality behind hadith? Some basic knowledge on the methodology of hadith. And then move on to the seerah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What are the key books of seerah? Right? How was, how did the life of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam turn out to be a book today? Who was the first person who initiated in compiling the life story of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then how was it then being extracted? How was it then being compiled and binded into a book? And what are the sources of Sira? How do we need to approach a Sira? Is Sira is just story or is there uh, even uh, authentic story from inauthentic story? And the history of the companion and not all companion, at least the the ten promised companion. We need to know some and tabi in. Why? Because today people are familiar with with celebrities. People are familiar with Fulan bin Fulan. People are familiar with uh, sportsmen. They they have literally know the each and every single lifestyle of that individual, but. Ask this question for yourself. Will these people be there to save you on the day of judgment? Will they be amongst the good investment, fruitful investment, or will it not be amongst the good and fruitful investment? These are the prominent figures, prominent figureheads in Islam. And a person should acquire as much knowledge as possible in the field of fiqh as he needs to ensure that his worship and daily dealings are correct. And he should ensure that he has a sound grasp of basic principle of the religion. We need to know some fundamental. We can't be just letting everything to the hand of the ustads. Like when a person wants to purchase a property even though the individual is not a property agent but they would do their research to their level best before taking the information of the agent into consideration why because you are going to invest in a half a million property or few hundred thousand property and because you have earned this money over a period of time so as such you would do a reasonable amount of research before considering the information being fed to you by the agent. What more about your life is right now determined or revolves around the information given by the ustaz or the ustaza. And based upon the ustaz and ustaza, you make the practice and the practice is going to turn out to be either a reward if it is by the guidance of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, And if it's not, then you are putting in effort, which is just equivalent to mirage, thinking that you're going to earn the reward, but turn out to be all your actions turn out to be in vain. Do you want any of your actions to be just gone in vain, just washed away like that? Means that there isn't any reward being acquired by you. So what? So this is when we should carefully consider the information which reach every one of us. So as such, you and I need to exert ourselves to a minimal understanding on 
the basic knowledge in the main you know in in in, in the core subjects which has been guided by which has been which has been uh, uh, guided by many institutions out there right they come out with uh, 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 certificate programs for you to have understanding the purpose of a certificate program is not for you to turn out to be a scholar the purpose of certificate certificate programs are there for you to have a basic understanding the essential understanding of how these subjects are being formed why the subjects are being there and for you to appreciate the religion of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better All right and this is the duty of every muslim who is not a specialist in the science of sharia so if, if he or she is a specialist in a branch of sharia then he does he does what every true muslim should do which is to do his best to learn his speciality thoroughly and be successful in it same thing if your specialization in is 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 in the in the field of food or in the even within food you have people who are specialized in western food in traditional food and the reason i'm giving you an analogy of food is because people are always including myself are very excited when talking about food so if you talk about food you have you know people who specialize in burger and the person as i gave you in my previous example in my previous session then the person would continuously exert themselves to perfect in the dish they are making even when they are at the top when they are at their peak they are doing the best dishes they continuously want to retain that standard they want to retain the standard the fact that they would want to retain the standard they would sacrifice their time to continuously focus on what are the avenues where they can improve so they would critique themselves they would critique the dish now this could be better that could be better we should have we should add this ingredient we should uh, uh, we should minus this ingredient they should come out from the oven you know that's how they critique themselves now what more about the religious science of allah uh, and specifically when a person is specialized in that field the more you should critique why so so that the more you grow why you want to grow because you want to understand it better and then you want to be successful not only in this world because the success of a believer lies in the future right in the future is thinking about the long term goal i want to be amongst the people of paradise so is continuously investing his seconds and minutes for the cause of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hoping that the returns are beyond the imagination of the person now it goes without saying that every muslim also needs to learn arabic properly arabic is amongst as well as it is the fundamental to understand and appreciate the sciences of islam you would not appreciate it more in any other language except for the language where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have revealed his final testament upon muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and learning arabic is something which is easy where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals in the quran in surah al qamar chapter number 54 where he where he did not only reveal the verse once but he revealed a minimum of four times where he say where he reveals by stating that that indeed i've revealed this quran in arabic so is there anyone amongst them who's able to take this challenge but it means it is easy but the thing is it comes with a challenge to learn any language is going to take time to learn any language is going to take time and it has a set of obstacles for a person to surmount and when a person is able to surmount those obstacles of learning 
the language, then you are able to appreciate the sciences of the religion more. So as as you grow and grow to understand more about the religious sciences of of Islam, you will then start to realize that how beautiful it is, how wonderful it is when you are learning it from its own language. And then the taste of it is, is way different. Like eating a food by ordering crab and traveling to that particular place or the restaurant to eat that food is two different things. I'm sure you guys have experienced it on your own. When you when when your friend have tell you uh, your friend have shared with you previously that I ate this food and you do not have time what you do you order you order through the grab and the grab comes to your place and grab sends the food over and then when you eat you feel that it's okay but what you do the next step is you put in the effort to allocate the time for yourself you allocate a time just for you to head towards the restaurant and sit down and you start to taste the food you start to realize that it's so nice compared to when i had it over when you're only going to listen about the sciences of islam in the language of english you will appreciate it to a certain degree but when you put in the effort to acquire the knowledge of arabic and then study the sciences of Islam, you would appreciate it more or way better than what you used to, yeah, to the, from what you used to do, from the way you used to appreciate it previously. And that is also a gateway for you to get yourself closer to your maker. Right? Why you learn? Because every single time you learn, it gives you an opportunity to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as Muslims, right, let us continuously exert ourselves by acquiring the knowledge and set goals and KPIs for us to draw. The reason of the KPI and goals is only because we want to get closer to our Maker Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hopefully what I've shared with you today is beneficial for me and beneficial for you. Whatever goodness only lies in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever evil I would like to ascribe to myself and then shaitan. Akul ma tasma'un barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-azim wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bima fihi min al-ayati wa dhikr al-hakim wa taqabbala minni min kumtila wa innahu huwa sameen alim akul kawli haza wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum ولسائر المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات فاستغفروا فيا فوز المستغفرين ويا نجات يا ابي ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا انك انت التواب الرحيم واتم الصالحات اعمالنا واجالنا يا الله يا رب العالمين بفضلك سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين الحمد لله رب العالمين سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والاصر ان الانسان لا في خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته